Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Let's go over the eight game MLB DFS slate for today on DraftKings. But before we continue, as always, if you guys could just leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, you might as well hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be here all season long trying to help you guys become better MLB DFS players, and I cover the sports as well. So if you're going to keep coming back to the channel each and every single day, or each and every single week, you might as well hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out whenever I post new content. You guys will follow me over on Twitter, I'm at ChrisPennell16. Matt CPen 16 on IG. And if you want more content over on Patreon, always much appreciated. We've got over 300 people on there. You can hop into the Discord chat, ask me questions all day. You get access to all the extra content that I put out, my updated spreadsheet that I update throughout the entire day, the data sheets for hitters and pitchers, top stacks tool, my cheat sheet, which I have notes on each and every single player. So you can get my personal opinion on each one. So if you're interested, links in the description below. If you're not, that's fine. Let's just dive into today's slate. So, not a lot of pitchers I like here. I mean, for the most part, all the pitchers are kind of just okay. I'm not, like, really wanting to go out of my way to play any of these guys. But they're the ones that kind of just grade out the best for me currently. So, we'll start up top with Zach Greinke. He comes in at 10300 which I don't understand why Zach Greinke is this expensive every single slate. Because he's not that great of a DFS pitcher. He's fine in real life. He's He, gets, he doesn't generate a lot of strikeouts, but he just limits the hard contact. And he usually just... He sets his team up for success, and he usually just gets by and gets the job done. Now, for DFS, that's not the best thing in the world, but the way this pitching slate is, I could definitely see him getting some ownership because he's got a soft matchup versus the Giants. We just saw Lance McCullers take a no-no versus them, I believe, into the seventh inning. Gave up a hit after I jinxed it, texted a friend that, hey, McCullers has a no-hitter right now. And next thing he does, he gives up a hit because <laughs> that's how it goes, but... I think Granke's fine. Now, the strikeout upside's not that great here. If you're looking at his strikeout so far this season... I believe his first start was two, then four, then five. So he's not a big strikeout guy, and that's evident to last season. He only had a 23% K rate, but he limits the hard contact, less than a home run per nine innings, 3.74 xFIP. I mean, he's a fine pitcher, and San Francisco doesn't pose much of a power threat. They don't strike out a ton versus righties, but again, the splits are just not that too concerning. 87 WRC+, plus, 304, 169 ISO, only a 22% K rate, but the matchup is very soft here, and Vegas likes him too. Lowest team total in the slate at 3.76. He's the highest percentage for a win, 65. And he's got five strikeouts as well. So I think Greinke's fine. I mean, he's not an exciting option, especially at this price tag. But he's safe, and I would not fault you for wanting to use him in cash games. Or if you want to get a, if you want to go a little bit lower, you have Kenta Maeda at 9,100. I actually think he offers you similar upside at a lower price. So I wouldn't fault you for going Maeda over Greinke. But just to me, it feels like Maeda is more GPP than Greinke is. So... I guess my first thoughts would be Granky and Cash, Maeda and GPP, but I wouldn't fault you for Maeda in Cash either because you can save some salary and spend it for some more bats, and there's some decent bats on this slate. So I don't think it's the worst idea in the world, but just my first thoughts were Granky F1 for Cash, but still, I wouldn't fault you for Maeda. But he gets a matchup versus the Brewers team who has been striking out a ton versus righty so far this year, and Vegas likes him too, only four runs against him, 55% chance for the win, and five and a half strikeouts. Now, I don't think he's going to go too deep into the game, probably five, six innings. We saw his pitch count anywhere from 80 to 85 pitches so far this season, his first three starts. But he has been fine. He scored 20, 28, and 13 fantasy points. And, look, this is a pretty solid matchup versus the Brewers. And there is strikeout upside with Kenta Maeda. Last season, he had a 4x fit, but a 27% K rate, 8% walk rate, but limited the hard contact at only 32%. And like I said, this Brewers team has been striking out quite a bit versus right-handed pitching. So I think Maeda is a fine option. You can save what, 1,200 off of Zach Greinke, and I think he gets similar upside. Now, he doesn't feel as safe to me as Zach Greinke, but I still think he's a fine option nonetheless. He just feels more tournamenty to me than Zach Greinke does. And then we'll drop down to, I presume, the Chalk SP2 on this slate. I think ownership might be a little bit split up between Greinke and Maeda, and there's also some other guys like Tony Gonsolin, which I think might have a little bit of ownership versus the Padres as a righty. I was originally going to put him on here, but I just didn't feel as confident in him as I did these three. But uh, Zach Eflin, I assume he's going to be pretty chalky. He's dirt cheap at 6,400. He just got done facing the Yankees, and he scored 16 points versus them. Only threw 77 pitches, but he struck out five and looked fine. And now he gets a matchup versus the Orioles, which I know they scored 10 runs last night and won the game, but, I mean, they're just not that good of an offense. And only 3.99 runs against Eflin here. 64% chance for the win, which is the second highest on the slate. His numbers aren't going to look too great, but... He's dirt cheap at 6,400. I just have to imagine people are going to plug him in as SP2 and move on because, look, you're going to spend either 10,300 for Granky or 9,100 for Maeda, then you throw in a 6,400 pitcher. You can pretty much do whatever you want with the bats if we're only spending like 15 to 16,000 at pitching. So 
I assume that's what most people are going to do, and hopefully we can just pick up a cheap win if Eflin goes deep enough into the game. Only went four innings last time, but we'll see if he can get that pitch count up from 77 to hopefully like 80 to 90 pitches. So we'll see, but I think Eflin is a pretty safe option here. If you're looking at the Orioles splits versus righties last year, they had a 23% K rate, 87 WRC plus, and a 304 Woba. They actually struck out quite a bit more versus lefties, but I think Elfman's going to be fine. Now, he's not a high strikeout guy, only had an 18% K rate last season, but it's against the Orioles, so he's going to definitely be in play. So I think he's your chalk SP2 on the slate. And that's really all I want to talk about for pitching. I mean, no one else really stands out. I mean, Jordan Lyles versus the Mariners, maybe, but the Mariners have been hitting pretty well, and they have quite a few left-handers, and Lyles does struggle with lefties, so that kind of scared me a little bit. So we'll see, but this is kind of like the main pitching pool I have currently, so we'll move on to the bats now. And we'll start with catcher, and one of my favorite stacks on the slate is going to be the Phillies, and they just got done having a great game last night. Now, that's not the reason why I like them. They're in another good spot versus the Orioles, but they do grade out pretty well, and it's nice to see that they hit last night. So, JT Romuto, he is super expensive at 5100 It feels like not too long ago he was like in the low 4K range, so unfortunately he's priced way up there, but he's an excellent option here versus Wade LeBlanc. LeBlanc, not the worst pitch in the world, but the Baltimore Orioles pitching staff is just not that great, and the bullpen's an absolute atrocity. Atrocity? Oh, you guys know the word I'm trying to say. It's not, it's not good, at, for sure, and we can definitely target all the Phillies bats here. I think I have almost the entire lineup here, but JT Rumuto, he's great versus lefties. If you look at his splits, 248 ISO, 276 batting average, over a 500 slugging. He's an excellent option here. If you're looking at LeBlanc splits, he actually gave up more power to lefties, but a higher strikeout rate. Only a 15% K rate to righties and a 220 ice we're giving up. So I think we can full stack the Phillies here. And I believe they have the highest team total on the entire slate. Now we're certainly looking to take advantage of this. They are, I'd say they are my favorite stack of the slate. I think the uh, Tampa Bay Rays are in an excellent spot, but I don't think they're in as, ag- as good as a spot as the Phillies are. So I'm going to try to get as many Phillies in my lineup as I can versus the O's. Then if you want another spend-up option, we have Mitch Garver going up against the lefty and Eric Lauer. Now Eric Lauer actually gives up more power to lefties if you're looking at his splits. He only has a 14% carry rate to lefties and a 199 ISO, and he actually has better splits versus righties. But I don't think Lauer's that good, and I think Mitch Garver can certainly do some damage here. Now, he's not been that great to start the season, but if you're looking at last year's splits, 415 ISO, 736 slugging, 321 batting average. I mean, these are almost like J.D. Martinez-like numbers. So he's going to be leading off versus lefty as he usually does, and I think he's definitely a fine option there. So if you want to spend it for Mitch Garver, I don't mind that. He's more so in tournaments, J.T. Romuto. Well, I wouldn't pay 5100 for a catcher in cash games more like most likely, so I think they're both tournament options. But I'd rank them real Muto and Mitch Garver. I don't have these in order of my rankings, just, just in salary-wise. But if you want a punt option, we have Mike Zanino, 2,900. I believe he was pretty chalky last night. Didn't do too much. I think he scored around five points. But Rays are one of the best stacks on the entire slate, and he's only 2,900. You get the righty on lefty. Or I'm sorry, not the righty on lefty matchup. I was thinking of the Phillies. You get the righty on righty matchup versus Zach Godley, and Zanino actually has more power versus righties. 183 ISO. I mean, his numbers suck just all around. <laughs> besides the power upside. But uh, there's some power upside. He's, he's dirt cheap at 2,900. He has a 34% carry and a 33% carry to lefties and righties. So he's pretty much all or nothing. But Zach Godley is not a high strikeout pitcher. Only 15% to righties and 18% to lefties. And only in a double-digit walk rate to righties as well. So I pretty much think all the Tampa Bay Rays here are in play. Godley's not the greatest pitch in the world. And the Boston pitching staff just overall is not that great. So I think the Rays make a pretty solid stack on this slate. And they're also really cheap too. So it's not hard, that hard to stack them up. Then dropping down to first base, we have Miguel Sano, 4,700, going against the lefty and Eric Lauer. And I already talked about it with uh, Mitch Garver, that Lauer is actually worse versus lefties compared to righties. But I'm still going to give advantage to these power righty bats on the Twins because they pack a ton of power versus lefties. If you're looking at Sano's splits, 367 ISO, 157 WRC+, plus, and a 285 batting average. Now, he does strike out a ton, but Miguel Sano's got a ton of pop, and you're pretty much just playing, playing him for the home run upside. I'm not really playing Miguel Sano just to rack up some singles and doubles. You're just kind of hoping for that double dunk performance. And going up against the lefty, there is certainly upside for that. So I don't mind Sano if you're spending up. But the absolute chalk option, I mean, it's going to be Reese Hoskins, 3,800. He's just, he's just too cheap. And he's in an elite spot. He's on the top stack on the entire slate, only 3,800. He's got a ton of power versus lefties if you're looking at his splits last season. 261 batting average, but a 444 on base percentage, 152 WRC plus, a 23% walk rate, 275 ISO. I mean, Reese Hoskins is a very easy play on this slate. Below 4K, very easy to fit in. He's going to hit near the top of the order. You got to like Reese Hoskins. It would not surprise me if he's one of the highest zone players on the entire slate. And then we have G-Man Choi, 3300. I don't hate it. I don't hate him as a pivot off of Hoskins and race stacks. 
I mean, I think you play Hoskins in cash, but in tournaments, I don't mind G-Man Choi here. He's really cheap at 3,300. Projected to be bad in cleanup. I mean, he could also be leading off as well, but I don't think that's... I don't really think it's going to be the case, but if it is, boost to him, but really first, fourth, whatever. I think he's a fine option no matter really where he hits. Going up against Zach Godley, get the lefty on righty matchup. And G-Man Choi's got some pretty decent splits versus right-handed pitching. 274 batting average, 219 ISO, 377 on base percentage. Like I said, Zach Golly is not a high strikeout pitcher. He's starting on short rest, too. And the Boston pitching staff is just not that great overall. So I definitely like the race here, and they actually really come in at a pretty good price point. They're also hitting in Boston, which is going to be a you know bump for their bats as well. So, and you also get the guaranteed ninth inning at bats as well on the road. So definitely like G-Man Choi at that price tag. And then if you want a dirt cheap option, he's also eligible at second base. It's Jake Cronenworth, 2100 I'm surprised he's this cheap because he actually hasn't been too bad this year. He's actually been getting getting some hits. Now, Tony Gonsolin, numbers versus lefties, only a 130 ISO given up and a 23% carry. So it doesn't look that great, but this is this is just merely a absolute pump play at 2100 with a guy that's actually been somewhat producing so far this season. So don't hate Cronenworth, but I really just try to get to either Hoskins or Choi with a preference on Hoskins. Then going down to second base, we have Brandon Lowe. I believe it's Lowe. It's either Lowe or Lowe. I remember they have a guy named Nathan Lowe. Or Lau. I can never get the. I can never remember those guys. But I definitely like Brandon here. <laughs> I'm just gonna try not to say his last name. 4400. If you're looking at his splits versus righties, they're pretty darn good. 265 ISO, 278 batting average, over a 540 slugging. You gotta like it. A high fly ball tendency to righties as well. And look, I like this race stack quite a bit. Zach Golly's not the best pitcher in the world. He's on short rest. Boston pitching staff bullpen has not been that great, so definitely the Rays are stackable on the slate. And I'm surprised their team total is not higher. I really thought it was going to be above five when I woke up this morning, so I was a little shocked by that. But I could see that rising throughout the day, so I do like the Tampa Bay Rays. And then just throwing in a Phillies bat here, Scott Kingery at 3,700 going up against the lefty in Wade LeBlanc. If you're looking at his splits last year, he had a 2.68 ISO to lefties, 119 WRC plus, and your 300 batting average. Going to be hitting near the bottom of the order, but. If you're wearing a Phillies uniform tonight, I think you're one of the better plays on the slate. And also, there's a lot of cheaper bats for the Phillies, so it's not going to be too hard to stack them up. Now, Harper, Yelamuto are very expensive, but outside of those guys, it's not that hard to stack them up. And then Joey Wendell, 2900 is a cheap lefty on the Rays. I think all the Rays are in play here. Prefer the lefties for the most part. You can play the righties as well, but... If you're looking at one of those splits versus righties last season, he's not the greatest hitter in the world. 136 ISO and a 261 batting average, but high contact guy, only a 15% K rate, and I like the price tag on these guys. They're going to grade out as one of the best value stacks on the slate in my top stacks thing. I'd, I'd have to imagine. I can actually just double check that. Okay, I checked it. They do rate out as the best value for me right now, and their uh, projected starting lineup only has an average salary of like 3300 right now, which just seems way too cheap. So I definitely like them for value today. And then going down to Gene Segura, he's also eligible at, short, at shortstop. But, whoops, I always like using Segura versus lefties. And I just realized he's my uh, top third baseman, so it doesn't look like I'm really want to spend up at third base today. There's a few good cheap options in Segura, Marvin Gonzalez, and Yanni Diaz. So I think this is a spend down spot. I'd rather spend up at other positions. There's a lot of good spend up options in the outfield, so that could be the potential spend up spot. But Third base is looking like a place I'm not looking to break the bank for the most part. But I do like Segura here versus lefties, and I like all the Phillies bats. He's got a 275 ISO to lefties last season, 289 batting average, only an 11 or only an 11 K rate. So I think Segura's just fine here. He's not like a big power bat by anything, but he's definitely a good contact hitter, and he always performs pretty well versus lefties. And I just like all the Phillies, so certainly in play for me. Then Marvin Gonzalez, I always like him versus lefties. Now, like I said, Lauer's actually better versus uh, versus right-handed bats. But Marwin, I mean, he's just cheap. Now, I'm not, like, looking to stack the Twins for the most part today, but I think some of these righties are decent plays, and also the lefties are in play for tournaments as well. But looking at Marwin here, if you're looking at his numbers versus lefties, he did have a 300 batting average versus them last season, only a 17% K rate, not a ton of power, 167 ISO. But he's fine if you're looking for some value here, but he's not my most favorite option. And then just dropping down to another race bat, we have Yandy Diaz, 3,000. I prefer him versus lefties, but he's dirt cheap. He should have a decent spot in the order, and I like all the Rays here, and they just, they're just they just way too cheap. It's They're priced like they're going against like Chris Sale on Boston. That's certainly not the case. They're going against Zach Godley in the bullpen, so I think all these Rays are playable, and they're just too cheap. I mean, it makes it really easy to make lineups today, just taking off some of these Rays as one-offs. I mean, you can full stack them, too, and just fit in some expensive bats as one-offs around them, but... I mean, they just provide a lot of value. And then we also have Zach Elflin at pitcher for SB2. So you can pretty much do whatever you want for the most part today. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. Then going down to shortstop, I only have two options listed here. But we also should remember that Segura and Wendell are also eligible at, second, or at shortstop. But we have Didi Gregorius, 4,300. I like all the Phillies here. Now, the thing with Didi is 
I think he sh might go lower owned than he should, but keep in mind, he's a reverse splits lefty where he's got better numbers versus lefties. I mean, they're not that much better than they are versus righties, but he does have slightly more power to lefties, and Wade LeBlanc gives up more power to lefties, so we get a double reverse splits lefty on lefty matchup here, which I like DD quite a bit. If you're looking at his numbers, 250 ISO to lefties, and the numbers aren't going to look too great here, but only a 13% K rate. That's pretty darn good, and if you're looking at LeBlanc splits versus lefties, a 319 ISO given up. Now, he does have a higher strikeout rate at 23% compared to 15% to lefties, but I like the lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup here. I think it's going to be a way to go in tournaments, and they're going to get to the bullpen at some point anyway. I like DD quite a bit, and if he's going to go lower own just because of the lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup, makes me makes me like him quite a bit, so don't mind DD. Then J.P. Crawford, 3,900, going against Jordan Lyles. Lyles is not the worst pitcher in the world, but he does struggle with lefties. He's really tough on righties, but... Versus lefties, he gave a 277 ISO last season, a 22% K rate, a double digit walk rate. And if you're looking at JP Crawford's numbers versus righties last season, not too bad. Going to be leading off as well. 200 ISO, 111 WRC plus, 255 batting average. He's a fine option. He's a fine option. I mean, I don't love it, but I'd rather get to a Phillies bat like Segura or probably even Wendell in the Rays. But I don't hate JP Crawford there. Fair price tag and gets a good lefty on righty matchup. Then dropping down to the outfield, I have 50 options here because the outfield's absolutely loaded. So let's just dive into it. Up top, we have Nelson Cruz, 5,400, going up against a lefty. Anytime Nelson Cruz is facing a lefty, he's going to be considered one of the top plays on the slate and one of the highest th home run threats on the entire slate as well. I mean, he's just way too good versus left-handed pitching. If you're looking at his splits last year, 461 ISO, 195 WRC+, plus, and you're 800 slugging, a 322 batting average. The guy just seems to get better with age, Nelson Cruz. He's a good play on this slide. Now, Eric Lauer, he is, like I said, tough run righties than he is lefties. But, I mean, if you, if you had to pick who's going to win a matchup between Cruz and Eric Lauer, I'm going to take Nelson Cruz every single time. <laughs> then Bryce Harper, 5,300. So, similar reasons to Didi Gregorius here. I think you can play Harper in cash games. People are going to be scared of the lefty on lefty matchup, and I get it. But he's got better numbers versus lefties compared to righties. Let's just take a look at the splits here. So, last year, ISO of 300 versus lefties compared to 225 versus righties. Then the Woba, 391 compared to 354. On um, base percentage was slightly lower at 366 compared to 376, but a higher WRC plus at 142 to 117. And the batting average was 283 compared to 249. Now he did strike out more versus lefties at, uh, or is that, 24% compared to 20, or I'm sorry, I was looking at the double, <laughs> the walk rate. So even, even in the strikeout rate, he was better in that department as well. So I think Bryce Harper is a fantastic player. I mean, he's better versus lefties. People get scared of lefty on lefty matchups, but I don't with Bryce Harper here. And if you're looking at Lauer, or not Lauer, Wade LeBlanc, he does get more power to lefties at the 319 ISO. So I think there's a pretty good probability of potentially Bryce Harper going deep versus Wade LeBlanc. And he's going to get to the bullpen at one point. He homered last night. All the Phillies are elite plays here. So if you're stacking the Phillies, you can't leave out arguably the best player, Bryce Harper. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's really arguable. I think you know, he's obviously the best player on that team. So Bryce Harper, like him quite a bit. He's expensive, but... He's a very important part of that stack. Then Cody Bellinger, 4,900 going against Zach Davies in L.A. I mean, I don't love the Dodgers on this slate. Zach Davies, he's not that great of a pitcher, but he tends to just not really get shelled too often. If you're looking at his splits last season, 182 ISO to lefties, 13% K rate. So, I mean, the Dodgers are going to square him up, and it would not surprise me if they just kill him because they're so good versus right-handed pitching, but... Just overall, I'm not like overly excited about the Dodgers stack, but Cody Bellinger's just got great numbers versus righties, and Zach Davies just very low strikeout kind of guy. And I mean, if Bellinger can just square him up, there's a good chance this ball could do, this ball could go deep. He had a 317 batting average versus righties last season, a 328 ISO, 167 WRC plus, 645 slugging. I know the numbers haven't been too great for Cody Bellinger this season, but it's a small sample size, and obviously Bellinger's great versus right-handed pitching, so I like him quite a bit. Then Austin Meadows, 4,800, going up against Zach Godley. I like the race stack on this slate, and even even he, I think he could end up being over, he should have been over 5K on this slate, so again, the Rays are just way too cheap, and they do great as my best value stack on the entire slate. Godley's just not that great of a pitcher, and if you're looking at Meadows' splits last season versus righties, very, very good numbers, and you're 300 batting average, 278 ISO, 152 WRC+, plus, and you're 400 Woba. Yeah, he's a pretty good play, especially if you're stacking the Rays up. Now, another tournament option here in Jock Peterson, 45, or not, I'm sorry, not Jock Peterson, Max Kepler. I mean, Jock Peterson's not really a tournament option, but Max Kepler is certainly a tournament option. You get the lefty on lefty matchup, and people hate lefty on lefty matchups, but Kepler, he's a pretty good hitter versus lefties. I mean, people like him versus righties, including me. He's got more power versus righties, but batting average of near 300 versus lefties last season compared to 236 versus righties, only a 14% K rate. 
he still has a 231 ISO to lefties, and like I said with Lauer, he gives up more power to lefties and a lower strikeout rate, only 14% to lefties and a 200 ISO to lefties. So Kepler, if you're looking for a tournament option on the Twins, I don't hate Kepler as a pivot there. I mean, I think it's a pretty sneaky play and certainly one that could go overlooked. Now, there's always the chance he doesn't make the lineup and he's going to be hitting near the bottom of the order. Won't be leading off here, but I still think he's fine for tournaments. Then dropping out Jock Peterson, 4,500. Should be leading off here versus the righty and Zach Davies, and we all know he crushes righties. If you're looking at versus lefties, one of the worst players in the entire league versus lefties. But if you're looking at versus righties, then you're 320 ISO, 137 WRC+, 252 batting average, and a 571 slugging. He's a fine play. I mean, he's decently cheap. He's on the Dodgers leading off versus Zach Davies, a low strikeout pitcher. Peterson crushes right-handed pitching. He's fine for a mid-range outfielder. And then we have Michael Brantley, who I always said, if he's on the slate versus a average to below average righty, and he's in a decent price range and not above 5K, he's going to make this player pull in. That's the case again, going up against Trevor Cahill. Now, back in the day, Trevor Cahill did have some pretty good numbers. <laughs> Actually, had some pretty decent starts and looked like he had some pretty decent stuff. But looking at his numbers last season, he did give up power to both sides of the plate. And I definitely think the Astros are one of the better stacks on the slate. The problem is they're all super expensive. Like, I think Bregman and Altuve and all those guys are like almost $6,000, which I don't really think is necessary here. So I'm not really looking to stack up the Astros at those price tags. I mean, it's not the hardest thing to do because you can plug in F1 as SP2. and But still, I mean, it's just really going to be tough to stack up the Astros. Now, you could use some Tampa Bay bats in, in that same lineup just to kind of even out the balance because they're super expensive and then the Rays are really cheap. So I guess it could work out. But overall, I'm not really like going in my way to stack Astros because of the price tag. But they do have a team total of over five, which I believe is actually the second highest on the entire slate. And they should have a pretty good game versus Cahill. If you're looking at his splits last season versus lefties and righties, you give a 302 ISO to lefties and your 400 Woba, only a 17% K rate. Versus righties, 233 ISO. Slightly better versus them. So I like Brantley here, 4,500. Should have a... I think he should have a pretty good day. If you're looking at splits last season versus righties, 323 batting average, only an 8% carry at one of the elite contact hitters in the league, over 220 ISO, just good numbers all around. So I think Brantley's fine in that mid-range. J.D. Martinez going up against Blake Snell. Don't like using guys versus Blake Snell, but and every time J.D.'s going up against a lefty on the slate, i got to throw him in, just like when Nelson Cruz faces a lefty. He's going to make this list. Now, Blake Snell's a great pitcher, obviously, but... JD is just so good versus lefties, and the thing is, he's really cheap at 4400 so I think it makes him somewhat playable. Don't think you got to go there in cash games just because it's JD versus a lefty, just because it's Blake Snell. But he's a fine option. 42 ISO to lefties, 242 WRC+, 400 batting average. You guys get the numbers by now. JD Martinez is just super, super good versus lefties. But overall, I'm not really looking to play too much Boston bats today. I mean, they only have a 3.79 implied team total, which is just really low. So not in love with JD. Eddie Rosario, 4,200, he has been on fire. I mean, I put him on here just because he's been on fire and Lauer just got more power to lefties. I, I prefer Rosario versus righties, but he's been hitting very, very well. And, you know, when guys are hot, you can just always throw him on the list because I can stay hot. I like the price tag of 4,200. Now, if you're looking at his numbers versus lefties, only a 14% carry, but the numbers do drop off from righties to lefties. Like, Kepler, he's got better numbers versus lefties than Rosario does versus lefties, so I wouldn't call him the same play today, but Rosario is still fine to me. He's a high contact kind of guy, and he's been hot. He's interesting to me, and also Lauer's the reverse splits lefty, so I think there's some potential there, but only in tournaments. And then dropping down to Andrew McCutcheon, 4,100. I like all the Phillies here. I could see McCutcheon end up being pretty popular. Should be leading off, and look, Phillies have the highest team total on the slate, and they're playing against uh, Orioles, which obviously the bullpen sucks, the pitching sucks, and if you're looking at his numbers versus lefties last season, power really wasn't there. I mean, he had more power to righties, but... So the batting average of near 300 and near 20% walk rate and just overall solid numbers. And all the Phillies are in play here, especially the leadoff guy. Then Kyle Tucker, Josh Reddick, pretty much similar plays here. We'll see where they're hitting the batting order. But I like the lefties here versus Trevor Cahill. He really struggled versus them last season. With, like, I said, like I said, over a 300 ISO given up and a 17% K rate. So definitely think Trevor, I like Trevor Cahill. But some of these lefties on the Astros are in play, especially the cheaper ones. And then we have Yoshi here. This is a cheap option for the Rays. And we also have Kevin Kiermeyer, both lefties. Oops, I don't have Yoshi's handedness updated, but both are lefties and they're both cheap going against Zach Godley. And they st- I think they do make one of the better stacks on the slate, just point per dollar wise. And they're both certainly in play. Now, Kevin Kiermeyer, not the best hitter in the world. He actually had better numbers versus lefties last year, but all the Rays are playable. And I think that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about for this slate, guys. So I do appreciate you watching. If it was helpful, Leave a like. If you're new to the channel, like I said, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. I really do appreciate that. Follow me on the social medias. You can support my content over on Patreon. And 
I think that's pretty much about it. So see you guys in the next video and enjoy your Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday. Pretty sure. So yeah, enjoy your Wednesday.